Um, that brings us actually rather nicely on to, to Ollie. So um, Ollie um, helps businesses and their staff, organisations, not just businesses, but organisations with um, mental health and resilience and mental fitness. And of course, um, not being able to see people face to face is um, quite a big part, isn't it, Ollie, of, of, of that. So um, over to you. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Julia. Um, and I think what I'm going to talk about uh, dovetails nicely into what Joe was talking earlier, but also some of the things that Max was, was getting at. So uh, my biggest takeaway uh, really is that it's all right to operate in what I've termed survival plus mode. So, you know, suddenly we've got all sorts of perceived threats. We're getting overloaded. And so actually what I decided quite quickly for our business, but also for our family is like, OK, Let's, let's reduce our expectations. Let's reduce our standards if we need to, to a certain extent. Therefore, we take the pressure off ourselves. We're all under this thing at the moment called allostatic load, where we're used to spikes of stress and, and anxiety. It's now just constant. Our stress containers are smaller and there's more in them. Okay, so be kind to yourself. Um, and that, because, you know, we all spend a huge amount of time and emotional energy, which is something that we've all got less of at the moment, trying to fight our way against these impositions and these restrictions. And we're just gonna burn ourselves out as Joe was talking about. So I think slow down, use your resources carefully. And, and I think in a measured way, uh, whether they are financial resources, whether they're emotional resources, and we can keep going and therefore give ourselves far better chance to respond to opportunities as they pre present themselves. And it goes back to this, uh, this, uh, this habit that I shared on the last, which would be the first of my tips is, stop breathe reflect and choose okay so take the time to stop calm yourself down reflect what are my options and then deliberately choose don't let yourself be hijacked by that fight or flight mechanism and so it brings me on to this uh, second tip which is i think we just need to expect some emotional weariness okay some of us have worked like this before nobody's ever lived like this before okay so we're all adapting you know probably quite differently uh, we've probably made all made some progress uh, since we last had the the webinar but um so as, as joe was saying be kind to yourself be kind to other people and just accept that you can't always be on top um, and by not fighting it you give yourself that capacity to endure now on the last session i talked about um this idea of self-determination theory we need three things as humans we need to have a sense of autonomy to control things we need to have this sense of connectedness relating to people and then we need to have this idea of competence that we're good at things and we can develop the capability and we do things that matter all of those are massively under threat all of those have changed our ability to achieve those has significantly been damaged okay so again thinking about how we can achieve those same sorts of um, needs in different ways and so what i found is that actually by quite early on um, doing things in my personal life have benefited me in my professional life. So fulfilling those three things in my personal life has given me the space and the mental and emotional stability to do others. And so actually, and again, you love an analogy. I've, what I've done in my personal life is quite quickly, I realized that I needed to set some goals. So I'm training for a, a, an ultra marathon at the moment. And for once, I'm following a training plan. OK, in the past, I used to go out and go and run and run and run and use my mind to get me over the finish line. So I'm following this training plan and a lot of it is long, slow, steady runs and then the occasional sprint session. OK, and I think this is a great analogy for using our emotions. Let's make sure that we're doing the slow, steady run so that when we do need to search, OK, we can do it. And by combining and knowing when to run slowly, when running, when to sprint, OK, we go ourselves that much better option of responding to those opportunities, I think. And then uh, my third tip uh, would be um, building this mental fitness routine. We will have all worked out um, what works for us, what doesn't, okay? And again, it goes back to Joe's tip here, but from a more psychological, emotional perspective, build those routines, okay? Pick up those things which are gonna give you that energy, whether it's emotional, physical, and build it, okay? I think, you know, as humans, we are all quite haphazard, aren't we, okay? We try and force this chaos into some kind of order. And I think that's probably what we need to start doing now. We've, we've tried, trialed and error all sorts of things, okay, build it into this routine and then adapt it where we need to. And that's going to give us the best chance, I think, of, um, you know, this is not just a marathon. This is going to be an ultra marathon, okay? And we don't know where the route's going and we don't know where the end is. 
okay it's probably just going to keep on going so pace yourself and that's it thank you ollie absolutely brilliant thank you um gosh okay <laughs> I love that. I love that analogy. And it's, 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 it's so true. And one of the biggest things that people are saying they are struggling with are boundaries because of um, home education kids and um, working in the same place that they're living in. So there's no clear thresholds to cross before you change mindset and become the work person, etc. So having those routines um, is, is, is absolutely key. And I love the idea of the stress bucket obviously is become smaller and therefore can overflow more easily. So thank you for that. Thank you.